Uh, <clears throat> Greetings and salutations, everybody. How's it going? Uh, I want to begin by uh, shouting out that uh, Too Cute To Be Sus uh, showed up just as we were beginning, and uh, she redeemed a hi there, which, hello there, how you doing? And I already shouted her out as well. Um, <clears throat> also want to make a note that uh, Banana Split 2024 ended up following me d during the, um, apparently, maybe about a week ago when I dropped a whole bunch, when, when I didn't sh stream anything, but I dropped a whole bunch of videos instead. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the squad. All right. <clears throat> Without further ado, I guess we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of um, You Know Jack. It's Easter, which means we may get some special shout-outs tonight. At least that's what I think is going to happen. I know they did it with Full Stream earlier, and I fully suspect they're going to do it uh, there as well. Anyway, we got the wheel. Um... I worked on a solution with uh, Linky Love and uh, the uh, Professor Lazybones on uh, trying to fix the lost code. I hope that works. If we get to that tonight, and if we don't, then, uh, you know, maybe I'll uh, test it randomly by myself later on. But um, anyway, four games. Here's the first one. And we got offline. Now has its own little screen thing. But you know what? We're going to start with pack one tonight. So there you go. Okay, pack one. You know what this means, right? Extra large trivia. All right, uh, give me one second. We'll get this thing sorted real quick. Um, okay. Really? Um, oh, okay, I don't have Steam on. That might exploit our issue. Give me one second. It should be pretty easy to get here. Bam. She's just out in your no. You gotta wait till I get this thing put on there, then we can go. Okay? Okay. Bam. All right. Sounds like a good plan. We will see you in about uh, 20 minutes or so. Let's get this thing knocked out here. Get me some uh, New Amsterdam bearings with 28, 23 weight oil. Yeah, you got it, Les. Cookie, can we get some names, please? Yeah, I'm all over it. Hey, I need to do a sound check. All right, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, contestants, how you doing? Glad you could be here. How many people do we have playing today? One. So you're playing with yourself, huh? Cookie, please. Sorry, just type your That name. joke, okay. you always do it, and it doesn't work then or now. Another thing. Are you looking for a seven question tournament game or more like a full 21 question game? We're going 21, yeah. baby. Like what, Jack? Jack. Your buzzer is the letter B on your keyboard. Number two, how you doing? I need a blue. Okay, okay, okay. That's okay good, you that's know good. what? I'm we, we don't have time. We don't have time. Cue the commercial. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Oh, shit. Uh, okay. When you don't answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices or you're going to lose cash, all right? Got it. Okay, everybody, be quiet. 86 the desk shop, please. Okay, and go to black, please. Post standby. Okay, ready, come on, go. Okay, here we go. And dial 1-900-TART-D. Okay, say what you will. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Woo! All right! Welcome to the program. Okay, you ready to fly? Time for Blast Off. 
Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. I'm going to check one thing real quick. I got to make sure that the volume is working on this. Hmm. Kind of what I was fearing. I think it. I'm hearing it fine here, but I'm not hearing it here. All right. Oh, let me shrink this a little bit, see what I can do here. Oh, it's not wanting to shrink. Very good. All right. The name of this category is Monticello East Side, same diff. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. If our third president came back to life during the late 70s and early 80s and was flipping through the TV guide, what show might he assume was about him? Dear John, live from the Lincoln Center, Charles in Charge, or the Jeffersons? That would be Jefferson says in Thomas. Yeah, President Thomas Jefferson might well assume the Jeffersons was about him. Until he actually saw the show, and then you might think it was starring some of his great-great-great-grandchildren. Wow. How about it? Hit me with a category. We just see the technology. Next up, we can rebuild him. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Steve Austin was rebuilt through the miracle of bionic technology, but without it, what would he be missing? Both eyes, right arm, left ear, left eye, right arm, both legs, both feet, both hands, pelvis, or right eye, left hand, nose, right foot. I think it would be number two. Put your left eye, right arm, both legs in. And you shake it all about. <laughs> okay, pick a category. All right, number two. Question three. The category is comic strips and pain relievers. Okay, this one might be a toughie. It's worth three thousand uh bucks. -oh. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get Not busy. 3, if you translated their names to English, which comic strip characters might appreciate a couple of pain relievers and an ice bag? Emperor Ming and Doctor Zarkov, Calvin and Hobbes, the Cats and Jammer Kids, or the Bumpsteads? I have no idea. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. The Cats and Jammer. Cats and Jammer. That's what's on German wood. I guess Pain everything robot. else was English, huh? Alright, come on, hit me. We oh, need a well. category. You're my question for I love you. My question for The category behind this question is brilliant insight or just poor eyesight. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Which artist might have placed the following ad? Help wanted a French painter, uh, need impressionable model. You should look good in uh, pastel and be easier to see with the farther away I get. Who placed this ad? Monet, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, or Rodin? Impressionable model, impression. We're good in pastels. Should have picked this. <laughs> Claude Monet, French Impressionist Painter. Ah, okay. How about it? Hit yeah. me with the category. Uh-oh. Gibberish question sniper. time. It's time for a Snipperfish Restaurant. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Prawns, yaks, and Mother's Day. Five grand is the opening value for this gibberish question. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you gotta think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Alrighty, Are you ready? let's do it. What cliche does this rhyme with? Schlep prawn the yak, take for others lack. Oh, got it. Go for it, type in your answer. I can't spell now. There you go. Yeah, one of the few times you can use the words mother and crack in the same sentence and not get punched. Yeah, true, true. Okay, pick a category. 
Number six, it's number six, it's. All right, let's see what we're doing here. See if you can say this three times fast. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. If the score is four score to two score, what is the score? 40 to 20, 53 to 23, 80 to 40, or 60 to 9? Uh, each score is, I think, 20 years. 80 to 40. A score equals 20. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. The category, Harsh Employment Agencies. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Hang on tight, because here we go. If the local employment agency pulled your spleen out of your body yeah, and made it look for a job, which of these would it be best at based on its function in the body? Lawyer, mathematician, airplane pilot, or garbage truck driver? Spleen. I think it'd probably drive a garbage truck. Yeah. Yeah, main function of the spleen is junking cell waste to worn out blood cells. Of course, driving a truck, your spleen might have some problems seeing over the dashboard. It is kind of small. Okay, pick a category. Yeah, man, come along to question it. This one's gonna be Star Wars and the Little Rascals. And we are talking 1,000 bucks for this question. Right. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. Princess Leia is to cinnamon buns as buckwheat is to cotton candy, tang, steak, or sticky buns. His hair is kind of sticking straight up, I candy. think. Yeah. We're talking about their hairstyles. Okay. How about it? Hit me with the category. Number nine. Do, 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 Here's the category. Roger Rabbit's Nocturnal Missions. And we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Uh, let's see. Fearing an attack by the son of Judge Doom, the residents of Toontown set up a guard post at the city's entrance. If cartoon creatures share the same traits as their real-life animal counterparts, who of the following will be the best entry because he requires the least amount of daily sleep? Magilla Gorilla, Sylvester the Cat, Dumbo the Elephant, or Astro the Dog? these to say up the most? I don't know. Now the correct answer is... Elephants. They sleep only about two hours each day. Dumbo do a Seriously? much better job than their first sentry. When he woke up, his gun was gone, his hands were immersed in warm water, and his shorts were wet. Huh. Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. The category is... That'll keep you regular. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Which of the following ingredients is actually in a box of grape nut cereal? Grapes, nuts, barley, or pits? Nope, this cereal's a eunuch. No nuts. Oh. Too bad you didn't pick Sedge. this. Malted barley and baked wheat. No grapes, no nuts, no pebbles, toenails, ball bearings, boogers, or vermiculite. So basically no points. Okay, we're at the end of round one now. On to round two. <laughs> now pay attention, because all the questions in round two are worth more money. Let's do it. Okay, pick it. And now, 11. Next up. The great tight end in the sky. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Spurs like the war butt 60 to 52. If playing football to eat the football, what religious group would not be able to play? Observant Mormons, Orthodox Jews, observant Muslims, or observant Hindus? I think it's pigskin? No, not that one. Oh. Here's what you should have guessed. No football dinner for Hindus. Observant Hindus are forbidden to eat cow, and today's footballs are made from cow skin. Okay. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Uh -oh, Gibberish question times two. Horror. Once again, it's time for a Tinker Lake Test Drive. This gibberish question's category is... Masochism and the Great Depression. We're in round two, so this gibberish question is going to start off at $10,000. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. Okay, get yourself ready. Here comes the puzzle. What does this rhyme with? A lonely, flingly salve to ear is your hit self. 
A lonely, flinkly self two year this year itself. It was said by a Can't see what you got, sir type. Let us fear not for a lonely flingly south to ear fizz year itself. How about it? Hit me with a category. Are you feeling lucky? It's number 13. The category behind this question is, is this supposed to be dangling? Hello, this one's gonna be worth $6,000. Okay, we're coming at you, heads up. Which of the following sentences does not contain a dangling modifier? Smelling like a goat, Sue dumped dead, bleeding profusely, we reattached Ed's arm. By slapping his rat, Ed makes a funny noise, or spraying everywhere, Ed turned off the hose. The introductory phrase correctly modifies the noun following it. It ain't dangling. Yep. Hit it, Ed. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Okay, I'm going to disturbed by this. Category. The name of this category is... Gee, what's that smell? I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Perfume often contains the valuable and fragrant substance ambergris. What is it? Frog spit, snake oil, sperm whale, excrement, or pig pee? Ambergris? I don't know, to be honest with you. And let's see the correct answer. Accumulation from the intestines of sperm whales. Boy, honey, you smell great tonight. Thanks, dear. It's my new perfume. Oh, the whale crap. Okay. All right, come on, hit me. We need. Uh oh, mess butt tit slime chore. A third gibberish. Once again, <laughs> it's time for a flagger piss no scope. Here's your gibberish category. Horse racing and dessert. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10,000 bucks. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. All right, with what cliche does this rhyme? Pat's away. The bookie mumbles. Pat's away. The bookie mumbles. Okay, let's see if you know it. Well, at least I'm doing Looks good at like gibberish tonight. Warm one right from the oven. Okay. Honey, careful, that cookie, she's hot! <laughs> okay, pick a category. Question number 16. If it's the fourth one, I'm this walking. This one's gonna be education, <laughs> bad cats, and the weather. Now, you're gonna be pretty good if you get this one. It's worth 6,000 bucks. Jeez. Hang on tight, because here we go. Which of these percentages is highest? American cats who are overweight, 1990 tax dollars spent on education, groundhog accuracy over the past 60 years, or part of America that is Alaska? Okay, I'm gonna guess two and four are small. I'm gonna guess accuracy. And here's the right answer. They have been 28% accurate. Yeah, several groundhogs have been hired as weathermen, but they hate wearing ties and keep eating their pointer. Ah. How about it? Hit me with a category. Chicky Jack is gone, let me hear you scream. Ow! It's question 17. The category. What did you call me? I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, let's get to the bottom of this once and for all. How do you literally translate Farvig Nugent? The people's car, the Fuhrer has landed. The pleasure of driving or made with Nugent? I think it's the pleasure of driving. The pleasure of driving. When all this time, I thought it meant, please tailgate me, for I have introduced an annoying word into everyday English. Well, that's part of it too, I suppose. Right, come on, hit me. We need a kid. Song to I've kind of stumbled across a little Here's bit of the category. Um, a boy and Calvin his and tiger. Hobbes avoid. Six thousand bucks is riding on this one. You know, every boy should have his own tiger, don't you think? Calvin is the Hobbes, as blank is the blank. Garfield is the John. Charlie is the Snoopy. Timmy is the Lassie, or Christopher is the Pooh.
I think Charlie's is Snoopy. No? Oh. In case Christopher you're is to about poo? the correct answer. Christopher is to poo. A boy with an unnatural attraction to his stuffed animal. I don't think that's how that works. Okay, pick a category. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Maybe you do know Jack. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. All right, maybe you do know a few of them. Let's find out. Which of the following is not a famous type of Jack? A deposit of tiny ice crystals, a handheld pneumatic machine for drilling, a solid food made from pressed milk curds, or a percentage moderate. scrotum? Okay, three is moderate Jack. A deposit of crystals? You never heard of Jack Frost? Who's been nipping at your nose? Oh. Too bad you didn't pick this. <laughs> a phony scrotum, which is not a famous Jack. It's really more of a sack. Oh. All right, come on, hit me. Okay. We need a category. Question number 20. The name in this category is... Let's try to I finish strong. a little flat today. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. As you know, every fine actor's dream is to have his or her likeness made into a cartoon. Which of the following primetime shows never made the jump from three dimensions to two? Starsky and Hutch, I Dream of Genie, The Brady Bunch, or The Jacksons? I think it's Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch. Never made into a cartoon, although you'd be hard-pressed to find a character like Huggy Bear in the real world. Yeah. How about it? Hit me with the category. True, true. Enter the attack. If you see two words together and they form a match, buzz in. $2,000 will be yours if you're right, but each time you're wrong, 2000 shall be taken away. But be not fooled. Remember the clue. It won't be a match unless it fits this clue. Where did you come from? Yeah. Just keep that in mind. Can I, Joe? We are starting. You came from Romania, I think. Transylvania. One of those manias. There you go. Nessie, Scotland. Oh. Of course, I hit Scotland Yard for no good reason. This is clearly Japan, though. There we go. Bigfoot. Good luck with this, I don't know. North America, okay. That's our that's our thing then. Pegasus? Greece, of course. Mytho mythological creature. Leprechaun on this Ireland. I the lucky charms. Mummy is Egypt. Pretty sweet, but the question is, how much did it sweeten your final score? That's the game! Not bad, not bad. Player, when I think of you, I think of superlatives like great, amazing, fabulous, trivia geek with no social life, stuff like that. But don't thank me, because the real truth is... You don't know Jack. One day you're going to be stuck in conspiracy theory well, Jack, and you're going to be wondering what's what the, happened. Uh, what's the deal with the contestants now? Uh, listen, excuse me. Uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just got to let me know, all right? It's the new Major Dick action figure. You choose the assignment, mate. All right. And I think that will, um, that would do it for Yodo Jack. Boy, that would do it for Yodo Jack Volume 1. If you like what you saw, Pound that uh, sub button, uh, hit that notification bell, and uh, be sure to punch the thumbs up button, and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. This is Ticket Squeeze um, Gaming and the Arcade's Close. All right, that feels like a win right there. That feels like a win. Let us see what we can do with the um, second game. 
I think we're probably a little too soon for the uh, commercial right now. I apologize in advance for that, but let's uh, do it anyway. Bam, here we go. Uh, wheel time for the second one. And remember, we don't do more than one go per game. All right, volume three. We're going from the one where Nate hosted and Cookie was the uh, thing. I mean, Coast was like the uh, assistant. Now he's the host, and it's Raul that's the assistant. Big diff, I think. <sighs> Big difference. Anyway, let's get, get on with it here. All right, I know what has to happen here. Bamski and Trace. 60 seconds, all right. And yo shall pause. I said pause, you silly rabbit. Because we're going to swap you over. Boom, now we're ready. See you on the other side. Just the one. One player, great, okay, fantastic. Fine line between being a game. Okay. Uh, twenty-one. Okey -doke. Thirty seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B. That's B as in Babs. Twenty seconds. What is with the starfish gobo? Twenty seconds, people. Ooh, Twenty seconds. Um, all right, listen. This couldn't be any simpler. Question comes on the screen. You think you know the answer. You buzz in. You pick one of the choices on the screen. Easy. You got it. Ten seconds. Nine. I think so. Eight. Okay, get the desktop Seven. out of here. Mommy, Six. Do they have Five. Take it to black. Four. Here we go. Three. Heavenly Critters Pet Cemetery for those times when your love doesn't fit in a shoebox. Yes. What you don't know could kill you. Film at seven. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey there, my name's Cookie. You have any questions at all, please feel free to keep them to yourself. Anyway, yep. you know, it's just you playing this time around, huh? Nothing to be ashamed of. Just don't let it happen again. Well, let's get started. I can't promise you nothing on that front. I need a category. I don't know about Masterpiece, but it certainly wasn't the worst. Shake hands with. Hudson Hawk was a masterpiece. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. I don't know, I thought that Bruce Willis movie had some potential. Consider this. If the cinematography of the thrilling comic masterpiece Hudson Hawk were influenced by the Hudson River School of Art, which significant scene would be included? Frank Stallone floating on water lilies, nude Andy McDowell surrounded by angels, Bruce Willis telling time with a melted watch, or Danny Aiello sitting on a remote hillside? Hudson River. I'm thinking melted watch. Oh, just can't do anything right, can you? I guess See, not. Now, I could have given you some cash if you pick this. Ah! In the early 1800s, the Hudson River School of Art captured the magnificence of this country called America in their beautiful landscape paintings. Annie Aiello sitting on a remote hillside. Woo boy, I'm laughing already. Okay, pick a category. No biting. And this one is... Hey, no biting! You get this one right and it's $3,000. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. Oh no, you've been attacked by Count Facula! What are your symptoms? You're burned to a crisp, you're a list of frequently asked questions, you're covered in chocolate, or you've been transformed into a scrotum. Dracula. I don't know, to be honest with you. For the curious, here's the right answer. A facula Did you just is insult the right me? spot on the sun. You watch so your mouth. Get bit by Count Dracula in the dead of night, or kill him with sunlight and risk getting burned to death by Count Facula. Man, you just cannot win. Okay, I need a cat. I think I've determined the playground is not. 
big enough for the both of us, well, Cookie. what do we have here? The playground ain't big enough for the both of us. $1,000 at stake on this one. You know, kids at school can be really horrible to other kids with problems. Why would the kid at school who suffers from gynecomastia be teased? He ejaculates prematurely, he's in a coma, he has breasts or he pees sitting down. I think it's number three. A condition in which a man grows breasts is called gynecomastia. And all his friends call Thanks him Thanks for the warning. Category, please. You can't stop at three. No, you gotta have four. Yeah. This one's called The Pope Got a Ring in His Cracker Jack. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Hey, you know how it's a sign of respect when someone kisses that big old ring the Pope wears? Well, imagine that the mm -hmm. Pope owned a mood ring. So take a look and tell me. What mood is the Pope in? Blue. Anxious, sensitive, tense, or happy? I think it's... he's in a good... I think he's good. From what I can see, the Pope's mood ring is bright blue. That means he's pretty happy today. And I think it's also stress-free. Why not? He's got a cool hat and a nice ride. He's styling. <laughs> Alright, hit me. Let's blow this down. Oh, I was tempted to hit three. I just didn't. Now serving. Air today, gone tomorrow. How does $2,000 sound? Let's see how you handle this one. If you combine the participants of Wigstock with the Wigs, what would you get? Hippies and a wimpy alternative band, Ava Gabor's catalog with bugs for models, drag queens opposed to British rule, or members of the truckers' union in Buffons? I think the answer is number three. Wigstock is an annual drag festival, and the Wigs were Americans opposed to British rule over the colonies. We the people give the queen two snaps down. I need a category. Looks like we finally found him. Open wide and get ready for There's Waldo. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Put your tray in the upright position. It's time for takeoff. Imagine Mr. Magoo decides to quit bugging everybody and actually get his eyes checked. If it turns out he needs eye surgery, what kind of eye care professional does he need? An optician, an optometrist, an optimist, or an ophthalmologist? I think it would be an optometrist. Oh boy, shouldn't have done that. It was optician, wasn't it? Should have picked this. An ophthalmologist is the only one who can perform surgery, but they can all yell, Look out! Okay, I need a category. Uh-oh! Left nut kick, I'm sore! Gibberish question? It's time for a triple SMS fun. Take a look at your gibberish category. If the question's rocking, don't bother knocking. This question's gonna start out at 5,000 big ones. Alright, as soon as you know the answer, buzz in, because I'm taking away some cash every second and a half. Okay, take a gander at this and prepare to tell me what popular phrase it rhymes with. I rocked her bed, why can't ya? And remember, ignore the punctuation. I rocked her bed, why can't ya? First clue, it's an ad slogan. It's an ad slogan for an antacid. Last clue, what would your doctor say? He might tell you you're slow, hurry up. I rocked your bed, why can't you? Hey Jim, what are you gonna do about those digestive problems? I rocked her bed, why can't you? My doctor said Mylana. Suffering from acid indigestion? My doctor said Mylanta. My friends tell me to open a window. All right, hit me.
This one likes to go by, yeah man, is Dave there? $2,000 says you don't know this one. You probably All know right. some version of the Let's old saying about here. opportunity knocking. Well, see if, we can if try an to get economic some opportunity right knocked on your front door, which might be the economic opportunity cost of opening the front door? You'd miss an opportunity at the back door, you wouldn't be able to find the front door, the front door isn't yours, or the front door opportunity costs too much. I think... It would be missed an opportunity at the back door. The concept of opportunity cost involves what you miss by pursuing something else, so you'd be missing an opportunity at your back door. <laughs> to avoid such problems, put a dummy by your back door, then the opportunities will stay there trying to get the dummy's attention. <laughs> Category, please. Aloha, question number nine. Okay, give it up for different cults. $3,000 for this one. Put it in gear, All cause right. here we go. Oh no, Willis from Different Strokes has formed a cult called the Circle of Willis. Based on its meaning in biology, where would Willis's cult most likely meet? At the base of Mr. Drummond's brain, in Kimberly's mouth, under Arnold's thumbnail, or in Mrs. Garrett's butt? Circle of Willis. Unfortunately, I have no idea on this one. It was a good category to pick, but unfortunately, it's not going to do me much good if I don't know the answer. Hey, got a minute? Take a look at a yeah. right answer. The Circle oh, of Willis his brain. is a collection of arteries at the base of the brain. Boy, those adopting fathers will let their kids walk all over them. Okay, pick a category. Nice choice, lover. You've just three been invited to do a three-way. Alrighty, here's the deal. You're gonna see a three-way like this one. When the correct three-way member is lit up, buzz in. If you make a match, you pack it a thousand bucks. But be wary, it'll cost you a thousand every, every time, time you you're buzz wrong. in and you're wrong. And be careful, individual answers don't necessarily have anything to do with the three-way as a group. Okay, uh -huh. let's get down and dirty. This three-way is known as to boldly go where nobody cares. And that means we're going on a track. Your three-way is Kirk, Spock, or McCoy. Here we go. Gotcha. And for goodness sake, be careful. Yeah. Casanova. Oh, yeah. Captain, that's Kirk, obviously. Seven year main cycle. I think that's Spock. Oh, yeah. 20 years. Clearly Spock. Oh, yeah. McCoy. Oh, yeah. That's McCoy. Oh, yeah. James Tiberius Kirk. Oh, yeah. Thank you, epic rhyme thing. Oh, yeah. And that's clearly Spock. Well, that's all we got to show you. Now clean yourself up while we see how you did. Wow, I'm just speechless. Uh, you're the best I've ever had, I swear. Uh, while I regain my composure, let's check out your overall score. And I don't remember you. Know, you. as much as I'd like to cuddle, <laughs> it, it's time to get on with the game, okay? Okay, either you finished round one, or you have another round to go. You know, depending on how you look at these things. Every question in round two is worth twice as much, so we got some serious cash at stake here. Let's get to it. Yep. All right, hit me. Don't look now. Don't look now. It's question 11. Pucker up for. He's not Frosty. He's my snowman. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. If Frosty the snowman's temperature were zero on the Kelvin scale, what could you call him? Frosty the boiling puddle of water, Frosty the melting snowman, Frosty the diffuse cloud of condensed vapor, or Frosty the absolute zero man? I think he would be the absolute zero. Zero Kelvin is known as absolute zero and is roughly minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. He ain't going nowhere. Also known as real damn cold. Two code. Okay, I need a category. I'm getting a rating of 12. Over. Say hello to Think When You Drink. You get 4,000 clams for this one. So you think you're a party animal, huh? Well, which of these could you pour into a glass and chug and still rightly claim you're drinking alcohol? Uric acid, cholesterol, insulin, or bile? 
I think it's bile? Bile? No, that's not alcohol, but it probably will make you throw up. Bet oh. you wish you'd pick this. Cholesterol. Cholesterol is a type of sterol, which is chemically classified as an alcohol. You won't get drunk, but you'll be giving your heart one hell of a hangover. Wow. Category, please. All right, let's see if we can do, try to do a little better here. The uh, selection is pencil alternatives. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Hey, I'm trying to remember what the name of that one toy thing is, and when you can help me out, buzz in and start typing. It's that thing kids draw with. It's filled with that silver gunk. To use it, you have to turn to not. Run with it, typing. That would be... It's an etch a sketch. The toy kids draw with it yeah, has not silver from, gunk uh, and screws up if you shake it is an etch a sketch. Thank you, Toy Story. Thank goodness <laughs> someone invented something to replace the hard to use pencil. Okay, pick a category. Oh boy, think positive, my friend, because you're about to face an impossible question. Oh dear. May I introduce making yourself dizzy and tired? And let's see, this one's only worth uh, $20,000. Okay, listen yeah. up. When you know the answer to this one, <laughs> yeah, as if, buzz in and type the correct number. Say you jump down, turn around, and pick a pound of cotton. About how many pounds of cotton will you have to pick before you can jump down, turn around, and have a bale of cotton? How many pounds in a bale is the question? I don't know. Um... 20? 20 pounds? Too bad you didn't type this. <laughs> a bale of cotton weighs about 500 pounds. So okay. when you jump down, turn around, and you're done picking, make sure you lift with your legs, not your back. Yeah. I need a category. Hey, all right. Guess what you just picked? It's time to Dis play Dis or Dad. This dis or dat's category name is Precious Sitcom Characters. Now listen up, I'm gonna read off seven names, and for each one I want you to tell me whether it's the name of a birthstone or the name of a Cosby Show character. Gotcha! If the name is that of a birthstone, press one. If it's a Cosby Show character, press two. And press four if you want to skip. I'll give you a thousand dollars for a right answer, and I'll take a thousand away for a wrong answer or for one you didn't get to. All right, okay. let's put 30 seconds on the clock. I should let's do okay dance. here. Pearl. Birthstone or Carl? Birthstone. Opal. Birthstone. Ruby. Ruby. Birthstone. Sandra. Cosby. Rudy. Cosby. Topaz. Birthstone. One more. Heathcliff. Cosby. That's all she wrote. Thing of beauty. Let's see your new score. Well, good things happen to good people, right? Okay, let's move on. All right, I can live with that. All right, hit me. Coming at you. On the seventh day, God caught a movie. How does four thousand dollars grab you? Hey, listen closely and imagine the following movie advertisement. He's been robbed of his wealth. His children are dead. His skin is covered in boils. All because his God has made a little bet with Satan. His that would be the patience of Job. In the book of Job, God allows Satan to torture Job by destroying his life in order to prove that he has faith. <laughs> The test audience didn't like it, so in the Hollywood version, Job has a beautiful wife, healthy children, and just a small case of adult acne. Yeah, I think it's kind of okay, missing the whole point. Okay, I need a category. On the big bayou in Louisiana, crest on 17. Here we have minor characters in the major leagues. How does $2,000 sound? Let's rock. If the Los Angeles Dodgers baseball team signed literary character the Artful Dodger, would it which excel at stealing. The, the Artful Dodger is one of Fagan's crew of young thieves in Oliver Twist. <laughs> He'd probably also be good at the pickoff and pinch hitting. Category, please.
the category Remember is. Remember when we were question, in the negative territory? Right turns. Better Bad wake times. up. There's 6,000 bucks at stake. Hey, it's moving day, and you're moving to Burma. If you try to rent a trailer from the oo hall you find in the Burma phone book, who might end up helping you with your move? Are you an ambassador, a priest, a martial arts student, or some guy named Hall? I think it would be a UN ambassador. No, but maybe the ambassador could negotiate cheaper rent for you. Oh. In case you're wondering. In Burma, the word you is used as a salutation of respect before a man's name, so Oo Hall would be some guy named Hall. After he's done helping you move, you could take him to one of those all Oo can eat places. He'll dig that. Okay, pick a category. For your enjoyment, plant one on me, baby. For a thousand big ones for a right answer here. Heads up, here it comes. If a Major League Baseball team replaced their pitchers with pitcher plants, what would the new players be able to do? Cover the entire infield during rain delays, carry players on and off the field, convert the sun's rays into pine tar, or catch flies on the pitcher's mound? Pitcher plants. I think they would catch flies. The pitcher plant is an insect-eating plant that includes flies. <laughs> Studies are inconclusive as to how it feels about chewing tobacco. I would guess it'd probably be against it. I need it. a category. Well, looks like this category is blood is thinner than ocean water. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Well, this certainly should be interesting. It's time for a guest host question that affects me in a very personal way. The last time I saw her, she was letting me have it with a wooden paddle. And I'm not talking about my ex-girlfriend. Cookie! Oh! Shame on you! Today's guest host is my fifth grade teacher, Miss Tukas. I see you haven't changed, you scalawag. Hey, check me out, Miss T. I'm hosting my own show here. I haven't done too badly for myself. Well, at least you didn't end up in prison. Well, yeah, right. Uh, what, what, what do you say give us a little <laughs> what are you pop trying quiz? To say, you got a cookie? question for us? Well, okay. Sit up straight, hands on your desks. Here we go. Let's pretend that the world's oceans got into a little scuffle on the playground. Considering the meaning of its name, which of these oceans would probably not join in? The Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, or the I Indian think it would be Ocean. the Pacific Ocean. Pacific means to be peaceful. Peaceful, yeah. You see, Pacifist. if it's called the Pacific Ocean, it would be peaceful and not want to fight. Hey, good job, Miss Tukas. I'm telling you, you haven't lost your touch. No, no, just my teeth. Okay, thanks for sharing. Okay, bye-bye. Well, bye, Miss Tukas. That was Miss Tukas. Okay, let's get back to the game. All right. Okay. Tragic ends. You're about to embark on the attack. Hit your buzzer when you see two words on the screen that match. 2,000 bucks if you're right, 2,000 off if you're wrong. It's not so hard as long as you remember this. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. I've got your tragic end right here, baby. Well now, how appropriate. Good luck, you're gonna need it. Yeah, I will need it. Romeo. I think poisoned himself, yeah. Captain Ahab is uh, dragged to his death by uh, the whale. Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, well, Moby Dick had to do with his drowning, so I think it counts. Uh, yep, that was a train that did her in. No clue on this one. Walter Dash? Oh god, I don't know. Uh, 
Uh, he was beheaded. Doomsday got him. I think they kind of reverse at the end, though. Okay, it was a heart attack that did that. Okay. Nothing to write home about, but not too shabby. Now let's see your final score. That's the okay. game. Okay. Come down better. It's fine. Wow, you were the best guest we had this whole game. Really? Now do me a favor. Take a quick look to your left. Now you're I don't right, think so. And repeat after me. You don't know. All Jack. right, that's one more in the can. Acknowledge hey, Raul, me. What's happening? Not really it's worth acknowledging, the but okay. You want to play again in your own little world? Let me know. Are they small All right, I think I know what I got to do now. It's going to be right here. All right, and that concludes this episode of You Don't Know Jack Volume Three. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that um, thumbs up button. Pound the uh, like button and the uh, follow and the uh, follow button, and uh, leave a comment in the section below. This is Ticket Space Gaming, as the arcade is now closed. All right, <clears throat> you know, folks, I think we're going to go ahead and hit that ad here. We'll be back in about uh, ninety seconds. See you then. But of course, if you got a sub or a um, turbo, you won't have to worry about those pesky ads. You'll just end up uh, enjoying life. Because let's face it, those ads are, are necessary, but they're also a bit annoying. Am I right? Of course so. But at least by me hitting the button when I do, it keeps you from having to sit through three minutes of pre-roll and... Uh, that's just torture, okay? I think we agree on that front. You know what else I think we agree on? The importance that it takes to be able to watch a stream and enjoy it. And it's kind of hard to do that if you're having to deal with ads. But like I said, right now ads are my greatest source of income. I am looking into maybe getting a sponsorship pretty soon. I think I know which company to. I just got to hope they say yes. I'm a small guy, but it doesn't mean it won't work. It just means it is what is. Anyway, uh, 19 seconds. Yeah, I'll be back probably Thursday with another game. I'm not sure which. Maybe we start Call of the Web. Maybe we do something else. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you then. All right. Welcome back, everybody. I think I am back on the clock here. We've gotten two games so far, and we got two more to go. So we're at the halfway point of things. Why don't we go ahead and spin a wheel and see what that third game is going to be? All right. Volume 2, it looks like we're hitting the all the volumes in this particular round today, and that's fine, because, hey, it, it's also one step closer to maybe hitting the uh, important stuff like you uh, want to do a, um, I don't know, you want to get through all those celeb cry calls? We got to get a little bit of Let's luck on our side on this one. Okay, move that all the way up. All right. Task manager. Eight. I know what has to happen. I know what needs to happen here. Just switching around a little bit. Boom. Now we're ready. See any other side. Okay, no, eight. Gordon? Yes. Hey, what's up? Why don't you tell me how many Hi, people Cookie. are playing the game here? One. Oh, poor you. You don't have any friends today. Oh, well. Let's Be nice. have your name. These things on the one day you'll host. Okay. Well, I, I wouldn't want to say it's literally yours. Uh, one other thing. Are you looking for 21. a full Cool. I forgot this. 37. Okay, you want to buzz in on the letter B. That's B as in Last of the Bohicans. 
do retin or cream. I'm pretty sure that this is feature of DM anywhere. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. We'll go with Bohemian Rhapsody. Twenty seconds. All right. Uh, when you when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz in, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices, or you're gonna lose cash. All right? All right. Let's do it. Ten seconds. Good luck. Okay, Nine. here we go. Uh, lose Eight. the desktop, please. Uh -oh. Seven. No. no Ticket to black. No. Five. Cue graphics. Four. If I can sit through Stand Leonard Part Six Girl. for a second time, oh. I can get through these trivia's. Solo today. Okay, let's see if you can fill up that passenger I gotcha. seat with some cash. Let's rock. Sure. Take your pick. What do you say? I have a vision. Let's have some fun. Here comes question one. The category is. Wait, I have a vision, and this one's worth two thousand okay. dollars. Okay, help me out here. I'm trying to think of this guy's name. Buzz in and type in your answer when you think you know the answer. He was considered by some to be a prophet. And uh, he was a 16th century prophet. It's Nostradamus, okay, isn't it? We're talking about Nostradamus, the legendary seer of Ceylon. It's funny, he actually predicted that you would get this one wrong. I guess he isn't so good then, okay, huh? Okay, pick a category. Here comes question two. It'll make you feel brand new. The category is my dinner with bogey. And 1,000 bucks is riding on this question. Okay, take a shot at this. If the famous Maltese Falcon from that Humphrey Bogart film came crashing through a restaurant window and landed in your bowl of soup, what would you tell your waiter? Waiter, there's a necklace in my soup. Waiter, there's a spy in my soup. Waiter, that would be a, a statue. statue. In my soup. The Maltese Falcon was a statue of a black bird. And if you don't like it, just eat the noodles. Okay. How about it? We need a category. Put on your pants for the naked dance. Category Rocky versus Wade. Two G's for a right answer. All right, fingers limbered, cause here comes the question. Topeka Board of Education is to Brown as Mike Tyson is to Tommy Morrison, Muhammad Ali, Buster Douglas, or Apollo Creed. I think that'd be Buster Douglas. Pika lost to Brown in the landmark case for school integration, and as of 1996, Tyson's only professional loss was to Douglas. <laughs> Although I don't think the ACLU is ringside for that one. Nope. Come on, we need a category. And we call this one. How Lorne Green is Ooh. my valley. 3,000 bananas for a right answer here. Imagine the producers of Battlestar Galactica have decided to create a new TV series. If the new series is called Battlestar Galactaria, based on the show's title, which of these would you expect to see in an episode? Commander Adama with ingrown toenails, Muffet the mechanical dog having two heads, Lieutenant Starbuck suckling Captain Apollo, or Cylons armed with mealy potatoes. Electoria. Almost sounds like something like some intestinal distress or something. Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. <laughs> if a man has galactoria, it means he's producing milk. You know, it's bad enough being chased across the galaxy by the evil Count Baltar without having to deal with a hungry captain and tender nipples. Okay, right, thank you. Pick one. Uh oh, press what's with mime door. Gibberish question it's time. time. Junior Lake Test Run. Here's a gibberish category Ostentatious people and their large jewels. The opening value is $5,000. 
Remember, speed's the key. The quicker you solve this, the more money you take away. Okay, now tell me, with what slogan does this rhyme? Slogan. Why flaunt thy gem, be free. And remember, don't get fooled by the punctuation. Why flaunt thy gem, be free. Accent. It involves a cable network. Why flaunt thy gem, be free. A network that needs to invest in camera tripods. Answer it. You don't get money for nothing. Last one. Want to see a music video? Okay, let your fingers do the... I should be ashamed it took me this long to come up with the answer. Actually, I hear they're changing their name to the Real World Channel. And it hasn't gotten any better. How about it? We need a category. Alright, next up. Wake me up before you go go. Two thousand bucks riding on this one. Hang on tight, cause here we go. If the Egyptian Secretary General of the United Nations goes bye bye to American Samoa, then what is true? Butros Butros Gali is in Pago Pago, Shing Shing is in Bora Bora, Duran Duran is in Walla Walla, or Humbert Humbert is in Baden Baden. Egypt. I think... Boutros Boutros Gali? Boutros Boutros Gali is in Pago Pago. Yeah. And he's lying around in a moo moo eating couscous. Okay, we're just gonna do okay, all that Okay, pick now. a category. This category is... Alright, if we don't WWF get... WWF shakes its thing. A trivia get question right, by the next one. We're not gonna get hey, a slurp uh, call. Have you ever heard of the pro wrestler Jake the Snake Roberts? Sure. Well... Alright, let's pretend Jake the Snake has a tail with a rattle. If it were formed just like a rattlesnake's tail forms, of what would Jake's rattle be made? Dried skin from his buttocks, bone protruding from the skin, matted butt cheek hair, or rolled up adhesive tape? I think it's dry skin. Rattlesnakes slough off their dead skin periodically, and it builds up into their rattle. Jake should have never stopped using that Nivea. Take your pick. What do you yeah, say? Yeah, it's not like I it's gonna be. Here's why we hate number eight. And this question's category is sham shampoo. Two thousand bucks for right answer. Check this out. Which of the following is not a real hair care product? Pantene Pro-V, Aussie Hair Salad, Henna and Placenta, or Hansen's Raspberry Plasma? I'm gonna guess it's three. No, Henna and Placenta is a real hair care product. Seriously? But only real animal placentas are used. In case you're interested, here's the right answer. Hansen's Raspberry Plasma. A healthy, natural body of a raspberry shampoo with that refreshing tingle of human plasma. I don't one. know what to say about this one. It's party time. Here comes number nine. And this category is... Three is a magic number. Okay, the right answer nets you 1,000 bucks. All right, here we go. Which of these groups actually has three members? The Three Musketeers, Three Dog Night, The Three Stooges, or The Three Amigos? The Three Amigos? Once, twice, three times an Amigo. There you go. I like The Three Amigos and a baby a lot better though. It, it was so heartwarming. Come on, we need a category. My uncle's funnier than your uncle. Hey! <laughs> My uncle, it is a trivia uncle question Jerry? for celebrity. No, wait. Are we talking about Mr. Television? Oh, yes. All right. Let's give a ring to the one and only Mr. Milton Burl. Wow. I'm dialing Milton Burl's phone number. Uh, that's Mr. Television if you're nasty. All right. Hi, it's okay. Oh, this is it. Okay, Hello? Buzz. This I'm isn't Janet Jackson. From Buzz, that you don't know Jack. Will you accept the charges? Collect call from Buzz. Huh? <laughs> okay, operator. I'll take it. Yes. 
Okay, Buzz. How are you? What are you calling about? Mr. Burrow, I, I am so honored to speak with you. Uh, I, I can't, uh... Yeah. Uh, okay, anyway, I know you were expecting my call, but but let me just remind you about what we're doing. Um, first of all, my name is Buzz, and I'm the host of this computer game show called You Don't Know Jack. Right. Um, now, we were wondering if you wouldn't mind coming up with a trivia question for our contestants. Now, let me get this straight, Buzz. You want me to sit here and think of some trivia question for your game show, is that right? Uh, and yeah. It, it all goes on my phone bill, is that it? Yeah, but I'm like a punk, and you're Mr. Television. I mean, you can afford it. Oh, sure. I can afford it. I've got enough money for the rest of my life, unless I want to buy something. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, please, Uncle um, Milby. Just... All right, all right. You're really uh, kissing my butt here, you, you or near it. <laughs> so what, what do I have to do? Well, I'm going to put you on the phone with my producer, Cookie, Cookie, and then I'll come back and let you do your magic. <laughs> magic? I just hope I have some magic left. Oh, come on. You're a living legend. This is so cool. Okay, we'll be back with Milton Burrow. All right, in a this bit. is. Uh, um, let's pick another category. Breaking story. Can we go six for eight on those. Um, Celeb Quick Goes. How about it? We need a category. This one's gonna be. There's something grim about this. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. Now help me out here. And when you know the answer, buzz in and type the answer. Ah, oh, I'm trying to remember, who's that girl? You know, her dad's dead, and she has an evil stepmom. Ah, oh, she really would have loved those 1980s jelly shoes. She rides around in pumpkins. Okay, gotcha. Get away. You're thinking of Cinderella. Cinderella. Isn't this a great story for young girls? If your feet are small enough, you'll marry a really rich guy. Okay, round one is history. Let's move on to round two. Okay, pay attention. I don't think that was some more, but whatever. Round two are worth more money. <laughs> ah, the exciting conclusion already. Okay, people, we are back with Milton Burrow. Uh, Uncle Milty, are you ready for action? Sure, what's the chick's name? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, um, you want my category? Yes, sir. All right, the category is Mr. Music Television. And we're going to make gotcha. this one worth $5,000. Is everybody ready? Here's the question. I think so. Which of the following heavy metal bands? featured me in one of their music videos. Guns N' Roses, Megadeth, Iron Maiden, or Rat? I think it was Rat. I think it was Rat. Uncle Milky, is it Rat? Rat is correct. I performed in a Rat video called Round and Round about seven or eight years ago. I played a man and a woman. Playing the man was a little harder. <laughs> 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 Mr. Burl, that was fantastic. I I don't even know what to say. I, I guess this is a part where I kiss your ass. Very good, Buzz. If you ever move to Hollywood, you fit right in here because there's a lot of ass to kiss out here. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, uh, Mr. Burl, I, I can't even begin to thank you for this. Don't worry about it. My bill will be in the mail. Just my <laughs> bill. And you'll get charged a lot of dough. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Milty. Take care of yourself, Buzz. You too. Send the money. Wow. Milton Burl, everybody. Milton Burl. It is. Let's, uh, let's catch our breath and uh, pick, pick another category. Also, I, I do remember okay, seeing Round and Round, so it wasn't like I didn't know. Twelve. Category, let's do it. Achy Breaky Cyrus. Get this right, you're bringing home 6K. You know, it's possible that country singer Billy Ray Cyrus won't ever have another hit. But if Billy Ray Cyrus's next hit single were based upon the accomplishments of Cyrus the Great, what might the song be called? I'm a Russian czar, you're a Russian out. I ruled Persia, but you rule my heart. The first man in Sicily, still just a boy. Or I'm drunk, I'm lonely, I'm king of France. Cyrus, I don't think it's Sicily. I'm pretty sure it's not France. Maybe Persia? Let me take a second of my time to show you what's right. Uh, it was I Persia. I rule Persia, but you rule my heart. Cyrus the Great was a Persian emperor, and much like Billy Ray, there were a lot of people who wanted to kill him. 
Yeah, fair. That tracks, say? actually. The category. The real primetime stars. This one's worth $4,001 bills. It's time to fill in the blank. Limber up those fingers. When you know the answer, buzz in and start typing. Gentle Ben is to Ursa Major as Hunter is to... Oh. I think it's Orion? Ursa Major is the bear constellation. Orion is the hunter. Yeah. And on a clear night, right next to Orion, you can just I was make waiting out for multiple choice. It doesn't really do much, but it's kind of cute. All right, go ahead and pick one. That has to be Homer Simpson's okay, Spider right there. Okay, coming up, this category is... Uh, this pastry is getting away from me. We got four grand on the table. Okay, imagine this scenario. Wiley e. Coyote finally catches the Roadrunner and decides to cook up his annoying prey French style in a bready pastry crust. What should he call the dish? Roadrunner en croute, Roadrunner au jus, Roadrunner brouillé, or Roadrunner dans un capote? I think it's on Cruise. The Roadrunner would be on Cruise. That one is, uh, I think that was Trevor Bird of I see a bright future for Wiley selling Acme Roadrunner pot pies. Okay, pick as a category. As long as there's not actually any Roadrunner involved. Category. The milkman doesn't always get lucky. And this one's worth $4,000. All right, yes, it's a bodily fluid question. Imagine this scenario. The friendly milkman shows up at Dracula's door with some bottles of milk but no blood. Assuming the milkman's an average person, how much blood can the angry Dracula extract from him? One pint, six quarts, ten gallons, or sixty quarts? I think it's six quarts. The average human adult has around six quarts of blood in him. Which is more than enough for Dracula, who incidentally looks really funny with a blood mustache. Huh. How about it? We need a category. An outstanding selection, because this under that dance? category is one major league point racking question. The Dis or Dat. Category for this Dis or Dat question is what they stand for. Now, I'm going to read off seven items, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's the initials of a government agency or a cable TV channel. As each Alrighty. one comes up, if it's a government agency, it's not both, press thank you. If it's a cable channel, we'll be press getting two. All shades of confused. And to skip, press four. You get a thousand dollars for each right answer, and you get a thousand dollars taken away for each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. And let's put 30 seconds on the clock. Let's dance. CIA, government agency. Government. HBO. Cable. TNN. Cable. IRS. Gavi. TBS. Cable. TVA. Government. Last one. MTV. Cable. That's all that she was really easy. Well, blow me down, Popeye. Let's see your score now. I'm strong yeah, to the finish because he eats these spinach. Total. All right, let's blow on to the next question. Come on, we need a category. All right, next up. This is the thanks I get. Papa right answer, you got 4K. You know, mom is your best interest at heart, but uh, she doesn't always know best. Famous Greek orator Demosthenes supposedly became famous by disobeying a common mother's rule. Which one? Don't talk with your mouth full. Don't run with a spear. Don't pick that. It'll make it worse. Or don't make that face. It'll freeze that way. Okay, I have no idea. Shoulda picked this. 
Demosthenes is said to have put pebbles in his mouth to train himself at public speaking. He's also said to have gone to bed without dessert for a month for that. Huh. Take your pick, what do you say? The category is... Brewster's Trillions. 4,000 bucks behind this one. Remember the movie Brewster's Millions in which Monty Brewster had to spend a million dollars in 30 days to earn his inheritance? Well, yep. imagine this sequel. This time, Monty has to spend one trillion dollars. If he spends one dollar every second, about how long will it take him to spend the money? Three and one half years, 32 years, 320 so years, minutes. or 32,000 years. 3,600 hours. Three and a half, I think. Three and a half years. Sorry, Spicoli. I think your calculator's broken. I didn't have Here's a calculator. Here's what you should have picked. He'd better spend more than a dollar a second, or he'll never get it spent. And this time, you should buy something really extravagant, like France. Okay, pick a category. Okay. The category is... You need a library card for that? And this one's worth $2,000. All right, let's see if we can get this right. ready. Here's one coming at you. If you lent somebody lent, how many days would you be giving them? Seven days, 31 days, 40 days, or 365 days? Lent is 40 days. <laughs> And now, by lending yeah, someone lent, are nights. you giving up lent for lent? I don't think that's right, how that works. Alright, go ahead and pick so. one. Super stuff. Twenty. And we call this one the best day of the week to get into someone's pants. Two G's for a right answer. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. It's Wednesday, and you've lost today's pair of Days of the Week underwear, assuming they're name-tagged. Which fictional character's underwear should you borrow? The prince from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, the roller skating girl from Facts of Life, the daughter from the, the Adams daughter Family, from the or Robinson? Family. Wednesday, Adams' underwear would help you get your days in order. <laughs> I don't know, though. Wearing her underwear always brings up a whole host of new questions for me. How about it? We need a category. Yeah, that's a good question. Where did I go? What did I do wrong? Jack attack time. When you see two words on the screen that go together, buzz in. If you're right, I give you 2,000 bucks. If you're wrong, I take it away. And remember, not all matches are equal. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. That's right. What did I do wrong? Yeah, you might be saying that to yourself in a few minutes. Good luck. I hope not. They ate the uh, forbidden apple. Okay, he sold human flesh. I think that's what it was. Ten killed his brother Abel. Yep. Ancient better. Was he a coward, maybe? No, he killed the albatross. That would explain it. Prometheus. Oh, he's so fire. That's what it was. Yes, he's so fire. Encourage your husband to kill Duncan. Oh, what did that do? No, he's the one that's so Guinevere. Okay, at least suck with him. He's so human flesh. Up on that jacket! 
pretty dead. good. Time to check Not out perfect, what you did to your solid. score. That's the game. All right. Not bad. Woo, you want to lie down? That must have taken something out of you. Well, let me fill back up your electrolyte count with these words. You don't know Jack! Great show, uh, roll commercials, and uh, Cookie, what's going on here? Oh, jeez, how about that? You're on the high scoreboard. I have three words for you. Get over yourself. Who cares? Move on with your life, and then tell me if you want to play again. You hush up. And that concludes this episode of You Don't Know Jack Volume 2. If you like what you saw, be sure to um, hit that thumbs up button, pound the sub button, and that um, notification bell. Leave a comment in the section below. And this is Tickets for Escaping, and I will see you next time. Uh, the Arcade South Coast. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds like a dub. Anyway. Um, before the last game, I think we're going to take one more break. Should be able to cover everything, I think. All right. Going to be a little bit more quiet on this one, so relax. I have, I'm going, and I will be back And the exciting conclusion. Okay. I did not forget you yet, folks. All right, uh, 40 seconds left. If you, um, in case you're wondering, uh, the plan is probably going to do a Saturday, I would probably do a Thursday stream, then maybe one on Saturday, one on Sunday. I'm not sure exactly which. I might do three streams this week. I don't know. Of course, plus the one you see in front of you right now. So, yeah. That's going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah, the Saturday stream might be a bit earlier, though. I don't know. Anyway, welcome back, everybody. It's time for that last game, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get to it. There you go. It's time to spin the wheel and make the deal as we do this one final time. We've So far tonight, we've been through packs one, two, and three. And it's not been bad. Not exactly great either, though. All right. We're going to end with sports. There you go, folks. Alrighty, let's get through this as best we can. All right. Last couple of times we've had pretty good scores though, so maybe this isn't gonna to be too bad either. There we go. Hi, Kite. 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 Hi, how you doing? My name's Cookie. Welcome to our show here. We keep How running into each other, Cookie. All day. Hey, you're a single player, is that right? All right, could you give me a yes. name, please? Yes. Like a breath. That would be me again. I, I think I saw that too. Le we'll learn a lesson here, Joel. One other thing. Are you looking for a seven-question tournament? All right, that's what I needed to know. Your buzzer is the letter B, as in Betsy Ross. Oh, who is it? Uh -huh. Well, I don't know, but no, I know that they're no time. Do I have as to in hit the backboard? Hit the backboard. Hey, we got 20. All right, question comes on the screen. You think you know the answer. You buzz in. You pick one of the choices on the screen. You got that? Sure. Easy, easy. Okay, here we go. Lose the desktop. Okay, thank you. Um, go to black. Okay, guys, stand by. Domo Arigato.
Pronto, buddy. Get him over. Oh, this thing just isn't working for me. But you know what? I'm gonna keep trying. All right. I'm just kidding, it's you and me! <gasps> okay, you ready to race? Let's do it! Category time, what's it gonna be? We're number one! Hey. We're number one! The category is... A Cinderella Soccer Story. 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Okay, hang tight, put your finger on your buzzer, here's the question. Oh no! Cinderella's evil stepsister has no intention of going to the ball, but still hinders Cindy from going to it. According to the rules of soccer, what would be the call? Interference, obstruction, goaltending, or holding? That would be obstruction. In soccer, when you block a player from going to the ball with no intention of going to it yourself, it's called obstruction. <laughs> And Cinderella would be entitled to an indirect free kick. Ow! Okay, pick a category. We got spirit, yes we do. We got spirit, how about two? This one's gonna be no bow. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Hey, my sources tell me they're coming out with a remake of the Bo Derek movie 10. Only this one's gonna have a gymnastics angle. Since Bo Derek isn't available, the producers decide to hire a woman who has scored a perfect 10 in an Olympic competition to replace her. Who cannot be cast? Olga Corbett, Nadja Komenich, Mary Lou Retton, or Nelly Kim? I think it's Nelly Kim. Nelly Kim. Hmm, Nelly Kim. Oh yeah, she scored perfect tens for her floor and vault routines, which is a hell of a lot better than what she'd score in the product endorsement competition. Oh, wow. Let's see what a good player would have answered. <laughs> Olga never got a 10. Then again, she never had to kiss Dudley Moore either. <laughs> Okie doke, well, give me a category. Three! The category is... Brady's on ice. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming in. I guess uh, be grateful for your small screen. things, huh? Here we go. If each of the Brady kids adopted the nickname of a so-called original six NHL franchise one morning at breakfast, whom would you not see at the dinner table that night? Peter Penguin Brady, Bobby Bruin Brady, Marsha Red Wings Brady, or Cindy Blackhawk Brady? That's a good one, though, because I've heard and the original the six. Answer. I'm just not sure. The who Penguins are not what. one of the so called original six. And Mike and Carol warned Peter about showing off his penguin at the dinner table. No pork chops and applesauce All right, for you. Come on, hit me. We need a category. Look at me. I got a four. Mm -hmm. Ouch. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Track and center field. Right here. 1000 bucks for a right answer. Listen up. Imagine the Olympic Committee has developed a new sport combining baseball and track and field. In this new sport, a player who hits a triple can only get to third base by doing the triple jump. Which of the following moves would not be allowed? Jump, twist, step, or hop? Twist. There's no twist in the triple jump. <laughs> All right, chubby checker, you're out of here! <laughs> How about it? Hit me with the category. Number five. The category? Do you need a fluffer for that? Okay, this might be a toughie. It's worth 3,000 bucks. In at least two areas of life, plunging your shaft into your target with confidence and accuracy is key. If you were to make a series of porn movies based on the equipment used in Target Archery, which of the following would not be an appropriate title? Hot Lovin' at the Stroke Bar Hotel, Finding Jenny's Plunger Button, Leather Glove Spank Fest, or the Naughty Buttresses of Castle Love? I think it buttresses. Buttresses brace the targets, and I find them rather bracing as well. <laughs> Here's what you should have guessed. There is no stroke bar in your archery equipment, but I know a great stroke bar in Bangkok. Okay, pick a category. Uh-oh, mess butt tits slime Gibberish shore. question. 
It's time for a ticklish Tesco. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. She's really let herself go. The opening value on this gibberish question is 5,000 bucks. All right, to solve this puzzle, you got to think fast, because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Okay, please tell me with what cliché does this rhyme? Now, don't let the punctuation fool you. Cliché. Chew skim scum, sue Chew skim scum, run. sue's run. Sue, sue's run. Chew skim scum, sue's run. Okay, how about a hint? It's a sports cliché. Got it. You think you got it? Yep. You win some, you lose some. So don't get cocky. Oh no. Okie doke, give me a tag team naked skydiving tonight at 7. And this category is belting the Power Rangers. Okay, swing this one and I'll give you 2,000 bucks. Wipe off your finger and get it ready. Let's get busy. If the color of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers costumes represented their belt level in karate, which ranger would be the most experienced? Red, pink, yellow, or blue? I think blue? A blue belt would indicate the highest skill level of the four mentioned. Yeah, I think only... Like, but maybe black any episode belts higher than that? Nothing's possible without the help of a multicultural group of friends. Ah. Uh. Category time, what's it gonna be? Two, four, six, eight, question eight is jailbait, go eight! Here's your category, cushy government sports. Okay, 2,000 bucks is coming your way if you get this one. I hear that public office is the good life. If the two U.S. Senators from Maryland wanted to participate in their state's official sport, what sort of equipment might they milk out of the taxpayers? Lawn darts and speedos, axes and a chopping block, horses and lances, or bows, quivers, and arrows? I don't know. Well, in case you're curious about the correct answer, uh, jousting is jousting. the official sport of Maryland, so the good people are paying for horses and lances. I'm sure the senators already have the saddles, chopping bits, and leather whips. All right, come on, hit me. We need a cat. The German judge gives a nine. The name of this category is Who are you calling a chicken? This question's worth two thousand one dollar bills. All right, let's get this ball rolling. Which one of these chickeny names is not an actual nickname of a college team? The Gamecocks, the Chanticleers, the Blue Hens, or the Running Roosters? I think it'd be the Running Roosters. There is no college team called the Running Roosters. Blue Hens is still Delaware. Chanticleers is, is really a shame, Coastal Carolina. It's so easy to get them up for morning And workout. Gamecocks is South Carolina. How about it? Hit me with the category. The category behind this question is... No, but I play one on TV. Oh, yes, this one's worth 3,000 bananas. Okay, coming at you. Heads up. Tony Nelson is to Neil Armstrong as Hayden Fox is to whom? Paul Bear Bryant, Billy Martin, Pat Riley, or Jeannie? Coach. Same occupation. Pat Riley? Yeah, Hayden wishes he had Pat's hair. Oh, Bear Bryant, of course. Let's take a look at the correct answer. Oh, Tony geez. Nelson from I Dream of Genie's a fictional astronaut. Armstrong's a real one. Hayden's a fictional football coach. Bear Bryant was a real one. And I think even today, Coach Bryant's funnier than Hayden, too. All right, that's one round down. Now don't get distracted by the well, round card, coach girl, because we're okay. off to round two. <laughs> Adequate TV. Okay, listen yeah. up. In round two, everything's worth double. You understand what double means? Times two? Okay, let's go. Okay, pick a cat. Eleven. And the category is... The horror! The horror! A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. Let's try to get a couple Guess of these what? easier They're ones. They're making a sequel to Robin Hood, bit. Prince of Thieves. Ah! Naturally, the movie features an archery contest. If Robin Hood gets a Robin Hood, what has he done? Won all the possible prizes, landed one arrow in each ring of the target, split an arrow that's already in the bullseye, or injured an innocent bystander. I'm going to guess split an arrow and sorry in the bullseye. Splitting an arrow already in the bullseye is called a Robin Hood. 
And I think that came from the 73 movie. And missing the target completely is called a Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. That's called a Kevin Costner accent. Uh oh, best putts fits mine, whore. Once again, it's time for a Tinker Lake Test Run. Gibberish question. Here's your gibberish category. Bad advice for stand-up comics. The opening value for this gibberish question is $10,000. Now you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'll be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Okay. Tell me, with what bit of coaching advice does this rhyme? Make a small poo the last bit. Make a small poo the last bit. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Coaches shout this in basketball. They shouted to encourage players to go inside. What, like uh, time for dinner? Basket. It's how you score two points. Take hey, the ball. Clock's running down on this one. Oh. Go for it. Type in your. Uh. Okay. Hey, Johnson, be aggressive. Make a small poo the last bit. So, what's his next piece of handy advice? Throw the ball into the basket? Okie doke, well, give me a category. And 13, five. Here's the category. Spider strikes. And I'll pay you $4,000 if you get this one right. Imagine the Spider-Man's been bragging to his fellow superheroes that he rolls over villains like a bowling ball. To prove his point, Spidey lines up ten of his arch enemies like bowling pins. If he goes with a traditional ten-pin setup, where would his enemy, the kingpin, stand? In the front, in the center, in the back right corner, or in the back left corner? I think it would be the front. No, that pin's called the head pin. Oh, pin center? <laughs> you know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. In ten-pin bowling, the kingpin stands in the center. You know, it's nice that Spider-Man has a hobby, but those bowling shoes clash with his costume big time. Tacky! And I don't think you can climb walls with those shoes. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Come on, rap, who's falling? 14! 14! <coughs> Sit down! And the category is Vogue and the Outback. And there's $6,000 at the end of this question. So, you feeling anxious? Me too. Let's go. If you were a rugby referee, which of these player fashion faux pas would not force you to stop the match? A torn uniform, untied shoes, socks pulled down, exposing shin guards, or non-matching jerseys on a team? I'm thinking three? Here's a little spending money. No. This is the correct answer. According to international rugby rules, refs may not stop the clock for a player to tie his shoes. It's also illegal for a player's mom to run out and tie it for him. Sonny, your shoe is untied. <laughs> okay, pick oh, well. a category. Love. Let's try to finish out the string here. The category is... Eddie, you're golden! And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Eddie Egan won gold medals for one sport at the 1992 Winter Olympics and for a different sport at the 1980 Summer Olympics. If he combined the two, what new sport would be his specialty? 10-meter field hockey diving, luge ball, equestrian figure skating, or four-man bobsled boxing? Ouch! That'll get you a nasty turf burn. Too bad you Jeez. didn't pick this. Eddie won the gold in the four-man bobsled and in boxing. His sled came in first, but all of his teammates were unconscious. Category time. What's it gonna be? Give me a six. Six. Give me a team. Okay. Sixteen. We gotta get this. This one's gonna be. What's wrong with hitting him in the head? And this one's gonna be worth two thousand dollars. Okay, pay attention. During his 1996 bout with Riddick Bowe, boxer Andrew Galata was disqualified. Based on the reason he was disqualified, what appropriate exclamation might Andrew have made to the referee? What people do when your back is turned. If I ever get my hands on you, ref, that was a low blow or bite me. I think it was one. Hey, turn your back for a minute. I promise I won't do anything to your score. 
Let's take a look at the big money answer. Golata was disqualified for repeated low blows. And I'm surprised Bo didn't haul off and belt Andrew in his Galatas. Yep. How about it? Hit me with a category. Nine plus eight. Ten plus seven. And this category is... Can I see some ID? And this one's 4,000 bucks for a right answer. Ready on the trigger? Pull. If each of the following boxers were pulled over for speeding, which one could produce a license that legally includes his nickname? James Buster Douglas, Smokin' Joe Frazier, Sugar Ray Leonard, or Marvelous Marvin Hagler? I'm gonna guess Sugar Ray. Wow, that was a bad guess. Oh. And here's the right answer. Marvin legally changed his name to Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Hmm, I wonder if he can get fined extra for egomania. All right, come on, hit me. How many holes in golf? 18! The category is God Loves a Hockey Player. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Hang on <sighs> I think tight. I may be Here just suffering from Because of the team's fatigue. name, if televangelist Oral Roberts played in the NHL, to which team would he probably hope never to be traded? Ottawa, Los Angeles, New Jersey, or Calgary? Devils 3. The New Jersey Devils. <laughs> In fact, if he raises a million dollars, he'll guarantee that neither you nor he will ever be traded to the Devils. Okay, pick a category. Illegal use of the hands on question 19. All right, let's see what we're doing. Okay. Here. Don't call me dancing. It's going to be worth $4,000. All right, pay attention. Here comes the question. Baseball great Ted Williams excelled in another sport after his retirement. If he used his leftover baseball equipment for his second sport, what would he have done? Played bocce in stirrup socks, gone German bow hunting in cleats, hit fish with a bat, or fanned bridge cards in his glove. Fish? Ted Williams won the Islamadora Tarpon Fly Championship in 1965 and 1967. He was a fisher. There we go. Flying fish were reported in three neighboring states. Okie doke, give me a The category, a whole new level of pain. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4,000 bucks. If we can Everything get this right, place, the jacket tech might come. be... If you're watching a game between here. the Kansas City Wiz and the Dallas Burn, what league are you watching? World League of American Football, World Hockey Association, Global Basketball League, or Major League Soccer? I think I'm watching soccer. That's it. It's yours, babe. There we go. Yeah, the Wiz and the Burn meet every year in the Penicillin Bowl. Category huh. time, what's it gonna be? Jack attack time. Soon as you see two words on the screen that go together, buzz in. 2,000 bucks if you're right, 2,000 off if you're wrong. Every time you're wrong. And one more thing, not all matches are equal. Remember the clue. It's got to be a match that fits this clue. It's only a movie. Put down your popcorn and grab your buzzer. And action. Okay, Caddyshack, I think it's golf. Bob Sutting. I've never seen that, by the way. Or if I not seen this one, but I'm pretty sure that's football. Soccer. I don't think I've seen that one either. Oh my god. Slap shot is hockey, and that is actually a good one. But Ryan is horse racing. Actually, it's about gambling too, but. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. I think I've seen this one. That's uh, figure skating. Wow, did you knock them all down? There's some fighting! Let's see the final score! That's the game! There we go. 
clean up of the positive end. Like Thank one. God. You deserve to have your own star in the Sports Trivia Walk of Fame. And I promise you, if you ever get that star, I'll be the first one to step on it. Because... You don't know Jack! Okay, great show, everybody. Um, cute commercials, thank you, and Cookie, what's the story with the contestants? Uh, listen, excuse me, uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just gotta let me know, all right? Uh, no, I think we're done. Anyway, um, that concludes this episode of You Don't Know Jack Sports. If you like what you saw, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, pound the sub button, uh, hit that notification bell, and... Be sure to leave a comment in the section below. This is Tickets Please Gaming, and the arcade is now closed. All right, that is clearly a win for me, I think. All right, may not have been the prettiest game, but we got it through. Anyway, let's uh, try to find somebody to raid, and I am probably going to jump off, I think. Um... All right, I think. Let's look at this one, maybe. I got to double check to make sure certain things are fine. Okay, works for me. All right. It... It's time to go, folks. I will be back probably on Thursday with another game. I'm not sure what exactly, but by God, it's going to be fun. What the heck did I hit? Good job. Okay. I'll try this again in a minute. All right, folks, uh, I'm going to call it here. See you. See you on Thursday.